So I've been playing Sepulcher. Now, when I first heard about this game, I decided that it required my immediate attention. Cause something about gothic horror just makes my ovaries violently thrash about my innards. Anyway, Sepulcher is a point and click adventure game. So you observe your surroundings and interact with them by clicking on them. This isn't a game you'd want to be playing just for the gameplay though. Cause the real driving force behind this game is definitely its story and its overall atmosphere. The game's story follows the adventures of a man called Dr. Harold Lang. That's about all I'm going to say about it though. Cause pretty much right from the start, the game takes off in a bunch of weird and unexpected directions. Anyway, this game is horror in the more traditional sense. Although, I feel that all the jump scares and zombies bullshit may very well be considered traditional horror at this point. Either way, the game is focused on horror through narrative and psychological stuff. And it doesn't do this through washed out gimmicky bullshit like Shattered Memories did. No. It does this by simply attempting to make you think things you may or may not want to think through its writing and atmosphere. Thing is, the writing in this game is done really, really good. And not in the, well, considering it's an indie game, I- No. No, 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 no. The writing in this game is as solid as a male porn star's erect penis. It's very much like reading a very intriguing horror novel. Even though I honestly never read. But it didn't so much feel as though I was playing a video game, as much as it felt like I was just getting sucked into a really awesome story. Now, with this being an adventure game, it obviously has some puzzles. The puzzles in this game are... alright. I mean, they're fairly easy, but they do make really clever usage of the items you have. If I could compare it to anything, it's kinda like the more MacGyvery puzzles in Monkey Island, rather than the input codes to open door puzzles you mostly see in horror games. It took me a little while to figure this out at the start of the game. I walked around thinking I was looking for something, even though I just had to use one of the tools already at my disposal. Still, I never really got stuck or anything like that, which is definitely a good thing, considering it would probably ruin the pacing of the story if I had. In terms of atmosphere, the game just has this whole dreary sense of unease about it. I wouldn't necessarily say that the game is scary or anything like that, but I don't really feel that's what the game is going for anyway. Like I said, it's more about it trying to mess with your head by being bizarre, rather than it just simply scaring the shit out of you. Now, whether or not that's the kind of horror you're into will of course totally depend on what kind of person you are. All I can say is, is that by the time the game was over, I was definitely left with a very strong feeling of down. Also, you may have noticed by now that the game has a pretty unique aesthetic going for it. Like, I'm not a big fan of pixel art, Thing is, I often just find it a bit lazy looking, and because I didn't grow up with 8-bit consoles, I don't have the whole nostalgia thing going for me either. But I'd barely even classify this as pixel art, as it almost gives off a sort of hand-drawn impression more than anything. And of course, this is all a matter of taste, but if the game didn't look as stylized as it does, I probably wouldn't have been interested. Now, <laughs> I don't want to sound like an asshole, but the game does have a few faults I'd like to address. For instance, the recording quality of the voice acting greatly differs from character to character. I would assume that that's because the game was made by people simply willing to help out for free, so I doubt they would have been able to get everyone in the same recording environment. However, it did kind of break my immersion just a teensy weensy bit when I first heard it. Also, I encountered a few graphical errors. I can't show this one due to spoilers, but Harold basically walked through a wall. And at one point, when I tried to open a door, Harold was facing the wrong way and basically grabbed onto an invisible knob. It's just a few minor graphical glitches though. I mean, it didn't really bother me at all, and I'm actually just trying to lengthen the video like a big giant douche. Anyway, I definitely say it was a pretty damn cool experience overall. And if you feel like giving it a go, you can find a link to it in the description. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to have to hide the fact that I don't have a clever joke to end the video with. <laughs>